Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. Just a short video today, we're going to do a bit of soldering. So, this is something I was repairing last week. Having quite a lot of problems with this one. And I wanted to change the MOSFETs, or rather swap the MOSFETs over these ones. Okay, MOSFETs, four of them. But you'll see this is a double-sided board just behind the MOSFETs. You have some very large electrolytic capacitors and lots of plastic things connected. So, normally I would use hot air to get in onto the MOSFETs. There's always around these power components, there's going to be some big ground planes. And often they have glue on them as well with audio equipment. So, you need to get a lot of heat into here to actually unsolder these and I didn't fancy it well because of that side so I came up with a technique tried it and it worked rather well so I'm going to show you guys how I did this in case you're having a similar problem yourself hi guys I found an interesting way to desolder MOSFETs these type yeah so this is a repair I was doing I've removed one you can see here so this is an amplifier which has a fault on one channel and I want to swap the MOSFETs from one amplifier to the other, okay? So, I would use hot air, but if we look under here, there's some very large capacitors down here, so this is pretty much under the area where the MOSFETs are. In fact, it's directly under the area. So, to do this safely with hot air, I need to actually remove the PCB, which I can do anyway. And then remove those capacitors because there's a high likelihood they'll explode, you know, with heat. Especially because there's a lot of heavy ground planes in this. And there's also glue at one end of the transistor. You can see the one I've removed. I decided to try using the tweezers. But I'm struggling to get enough heat into this side to unsolder the MOSFET. Because there's some very heavy planes on this PCB, okay. So you can see that's not actually helping me really, okay. It needs more heat. Unsoldering this end, the legs, is not quite so difficult. So what I'm going to do is add some flux to this. Okay. We'll come in with the soldering guys with a big chunky BC3 tip on it, set to 380. The tweezers are set to 350, okay. So we'll come in with this. And this should get the heat into this side quite nicely. Okay, get the tweezers in as well. And I'm hoping... Just heat that one. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so that worked rather well, don't you think? And the glue just melted. Yeah, the glue's melted. So let's try that again on the other side of the amplifier. So I haven't had to remove the board from the amplifier. I haven't got to worry about capacitors under there. Okay. I want to use the tweezers right-handed, so I'm going to turn this around so I can get the soldering iron over to the other side of the MOSFET. I'll add some flux because it just makes it easier. Right, these leads were in my way so I've just unplugged the leads, get them out of the way. And let's try this again, so heat the tab of the MOSFET with the big soldering iron. Come in with this one so this will do the legs. Okay. Look. And the last one, well, let's try it. So, heat up the tab. Again, onto the MOSFET, get the other leg to melt. So, just get the two of them to melt. And hopefully, this will just come off. Okay. This one's a little bit tricky to get in here because of the thing and the way, but I've got it. Yeah, we're done. So that was a bit fiddly, that last one, guys, but yeah. Okay, let's just clean that up. We can take a closer look. Yeah, that looks really nice, and that worked just great, guys, even with the glue on there, which can be a real pain in the ass when it comes to desoldering. So... This uh, soldering iron, this is the KSG or T12. I've had this for some years. I think this or C245, something with a chunky tip. So something that has a good chunky tip. 
with plenty of surface area to get the heat in on the tab. The tweezers are these ones, so these are the Secure HT140. This is a great tool. I've had this for a month or more now, maybe a couple of months. And guys, this thing is just excellent. I'm sure you've seen me use this many times already. So there's another use for it. And the flux I was using this one. So this is from AliExpress. It's inexpensive. It always comes with the expiry date a long time out of date. But having said that, I bought 10 tubes of this like a few years ago. And I've probably had them since. And yet it still works just fine. It's nice and fluid, okay? So if you're working with this sort of stuff, especially in situations where it's difficult to use hot air, and this bud's a very good example of that. Because on the other side we have the large capacitors, some more capacitors, and we also have all these plastic connectors, so we can't use a preheater with this or anything like that. And we have to take some care of how much heat we're putting into it. So, if you have that situation, guys, you want a different way of working. If you've not tried that before, give it a go. Yeah. And let me know down there what you think. So, that worked rather well, guys. Let's try this on a um, motherboard. So, this is a scrap laptop motherboard. Double-sided. This is quite an old one because it has... A socket here okay so again plastic you don't want to melt we have some MOSFETs here a VRM let's see if we can use the same technique and also let's try a variation on this as well so first we'll try the same that we used on that other PCB so we'll try to get this one off as is quite close to the CPU socket so we'll add some flux wedded solder Okay. And we'll try the same trick. So first I'll just warm this up in the general area with the hot air. Not very hot because of the plastic, but just give this a bit of a warm. A little bit of heat into it, okay. That should be plenty. I have the tweezers right-handed. So we'll get some heat in on this side onto the board. Okay, coming onto this side and then just try and grab hold of it give us a little bit of a boost here I almost had it no that I'm struggling with Okay, just try again some warmth into this side to try and melt the solder underneath. Okay, can we get it? No. So it doesn't seem to work too well with this style of MOSFET. It may be because there's another pad under there. Do you see if we look halfway down this, this may have two pads underneath it. So let's try using the hot air with the tweezers. I would normally use tweezers to pick the thing up anyway, so let's use the hot tweezers. Let's try this. Yes. Yes. And you can see why it wouldn't come off because those extra pads underneath. I'll allow that to cool down and then we'll try the one next to it just using hot air and normal tweezers, okay? I've let the board cool down. I've added some leaded solder and flux already. So we can try these one after the other. This is my thermocouple. So we can see the temperature in the workshop is about 25 degrees, 25.5. It is in the beginning of March now, so it's starting to warm up here rather, yeah. That's what we have, 26. So if we go onto here, there's still a little bit of warmth in the board. 31 degrees, the same. So I'm gonna remove one of these using hot air and the regular tweezers. We'll let it cool down to about the same temperature and then we'll do the same with hot air and hot tweezers and we'll time how long it takes. 
starting now. Okay, so same temperature in the workshop pretty much, PCB, eh, same as before basically. Let's try this again, so this time we're going to use hot air and hot tweezers and once again see how long it takes. Okay. there guys i think that was impressive i'll put an actual timer on the video when i play it back had a quick look so using hot air and the tweezers the traditional way 41 seconds using hot air and the hot tweezers 18. <laughs> there's a big difference okay hope you enjoyed that get in the comments below let me know what you think and i look forward to seeing you all soon again on learning electronics repair Chef, and now guys.